While a lot of us like to moan and whine about WWE, you've got to admit, if one day you got a contract and it had those three initials at the top of the paper, you would probably melt down as a human being because you'd just be so excited. And if you weren't a wrestler, you'd be like, well, how the hell did I get this? But especially when you were a kid, the idea of turning it down probably wouldn't enter your brain. And yet when you turn into an adult and you get some success in the wrestling business, well, your priorities can shift and many a time that has happened. So yes, my name is Simon Miller, welcome to What Culture Wrestling, and this is exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Why these 10 wrestlers turned down a WWE deal. Slap your head, I can't do it. Here's why. Number 10, Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill is great. I mean, every time you get a wrestler that looks like a superhero, you're onto something. And if in the future, somebody doesn't cast her as Storm from the X-Men, well, I am going to be very upset. I mean, not that upset, but I'd be confused. During a recent AEW Wrestling with the Week podcast too, she also admitted that in the past, not only had she had a tryout with WWE, but that she turned them down. Now, this was interesting because at the end of last year, there had been some news that said while she did have a tryout, WWE wasn't interested, which seems nuts to me. But as Jade tells it, Mark Henry hooked her up. She went down there. It went well but then she turned it down. I mean, I guess that could mean anything, but the point is she's not with the WWE, which once again seems utterly crazy given how many people they've hired based on looks alone. Jade also mentioned that in the beginning when she was training, she basically had to bully guys to wrestle her like a man or whatever you want to call it. And this is why she rocks and why she's going to go on to be a massive star. Number nine, Kenny Omega. And we are staying with AEW top tier talent because in at number nine is Kenny Omega. His history with the WWE is actually quite amazing because he was in their developmental system in 2005 before he decided, I don't think I'm gonna get much out of this. I don't think they see me how I see me. So I'm gonna spread my wings and get experience elsewhere. Although I do want to mention, every time he talks about it, he's always so nice and he's always so appreciative. Kenny Omega, a good dude. Push the fast forward button to 2018 though, and he had been proven right because he was one of the biggest wrestling stars in the world. And of course, because his contract with the New Japan came up, all of a sudden, who was on the phone? That's right, it's WWE. It's my hand, it's not a phone. As Omega himself discussed on Wrestling Observer Radio, he even considered this just because of the way that WWE works. There you get given storylines and you have to make the best of it as you possibly can, which is quite the opposite to what he had been doing. So maybe it's something he wanted to experience. This is also why he's great because he always sees things from multiple angles. But as we know, he decided to stick with his friends. He was a pivotal part of the launch of AEW. And now he is a fantastic world champion. Number eight, the Young Bucks. Remember what we just said about Kenny Omega? And I hope so because it was literally seconds ago. Well, you can take that and kind of apply it to the Young Bucks. I mean, WWE was so interested in them when they were free agents. The rumor was that the deal they got offered was come in for six months, you can have a big say in how you are being used, and if you still don't like it, we'll shake hands and then you can leave. I mean, that is so hard to believe, but I think it's true. Let's face it though, the Bucks have been one of the most popular and marketable teams for ages, and the journey they've been on throughout wrestling is proper bonkers. Like they used to be used in WWE as developmental talent and getting to the WWE was their dream, but they were so taken aback with how they were treated there. After they'd left the show, they sat down and pondered, is that even where we want to go? So it totally changed their mindset and then they totally changed the business. And I think there's every chance when they get to the end of their careers, they may never step foot in a WWE ring, or at least not under a contract. And how many people can say that? and still be massive successes, the list ain't that long. Number seven, Sting. Yes, Sting came into the WWE for a short while in 2014. He had that incredible debut at the Survivor Series, had that pretty good match with Seth Rollins that just happened to end sadly, and had that WrestleMania 31 match with Triple H, which kind of sums everything up. Because it was the fallout from that contest, which is why Steve Borden had decided against signing for World Wrestling Entertainment for essentially 15 years. Because since the day WCW closed its doors, to the point the icon went, oh, maybe it would be pretty good to do a WrestleMania, he was convinced that if he came into a Vince McMahon-led promotion, nobody would know what to do with him, nobody would know how to use him, because he was a world championship wrestling creation, and we all know how that goes. So yeah, he rightly assumed it wouldn't be ideal, and as that match proved, it wasn't ideal. I mean, not only did he lose, 
He was pitched as being like a buddy of the NWO, even though Sting spent a long time in WCW hitting the NWO with a bat. It doesn't matter because he's a legend regardless and has proven that again in AEW, but you have to be a confident guy to go, you know what, I'm not going to go to the biggest company in the world for more than a decade. Number six, Kota Ibushi. It seems nuts now, but yes, Kota Ibushi was in the Cruiserweight Classic back in 2016. He had bangers with the likes of Brian Kendrick and Cedric Alexander, and he even appeared on NXT a couple of times. When all of this was done though, and he was offered a deal, he turned it down because he wanted to sign with New Japan, and that would happen again a few years later when AEW said, hey, do you wanna come work with us? He said, no, I'm gonna stay with New Japan. All that matters though is the incredible story that did the rounds about what Ibushi did when he ran into Vince McMahon, because somehow he had no idea who Vinnie Mac was, so he just walked up to him and gave him a high five, and because like the entourage around Vince McMahon realized what had gone down, apparently, or so it had said, they were very upset. This, however, makes Kota Ibushi the greatest person to ever live. I mean, who else can tell that story? Number five, Rhino. Rhino has had a pretty awesome run, no matter what promotion he's been in, including the WWE when he signed around about 2001 and aligned himself with Kurt Angle, Edge and Christian. He was a solid member of the roster for ages, but he soon left like everybody did in 2006 before he found himself in TNA. However, when WWE decided to revive the ECW brand, they were like, well, we have to get Rhino back. So once again, they picked up the hand phone and they gave him a call. The thing was, Rhino was more than happy with his current lot, so he turned them down but he did not leave it there. A former TV and world champion in Extreme Championship Wrestling, he brought these belts, apparently they were in a bag, to an Impact taping and proceeded to tell everybody about this deal before he took said bag and burnt it and I suppose destroyed the belts in the process. I mean, he even threw it in the trash, which is quite the way to say no. And while you may be like, well, he burned his bridges quite literally with WWE, he was back in like 2015, 2016, which I always like to say, he made a splash, he did an angle that we're still talking about now, and he was still able to live his dream. Number four, Will Ospreay. Will we one day see Will Ospreay in the WWE? The answer, of course, is maybe, but I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon because not only is he absolutely killing it in New Japan, but also when he appeared on Chris Jericho's Talk Is Jericho podcast, he said, look, WWE's great, they're really nice, but I don't really like the travel schedule. Because he too did receive a call from the powers that be, and while he thought that was very kind, he made it very clear that his goals were in Japan, but also, and I kind of quote, I'm paraphrasing, he said to Chris Jericho, those guys work on Christmas Day. I love my family. They're very important to me. I'd rather find a better balance. So we can all understand that. It makes perfect sense. And also, when Will Ospreay is done with the East, you could make the argument that when he comes back to the West, he goes to AEW. There would be a lot of people that would want to sign him. Number three, Tetsuo Naito. Another New Japan legend. This one happened as recently as 2018 because after Naito had taken on Chris Jericho, there he is again at Dominion. He apparently too got a hand phone call from WWE that said, hey man, we love your work. Would you like to come and work for us? He said no straight away when talking to the media continued, there is nothing to think about, at least for me. This New Japan ring is already the world's number one stage. The fans know this. That's why I think we should focus on our home crowd before looking international. So what a loyal guy. It also sounds like he's crazy dedicated, so it's another person that will probably never end up in WWE. And that just means the wrestling world is growing and expanding, and that's what we should all want. Saying that if he did go to WWE, at least he would be dropped on his head less. Number two, Adam Page. Another guy that fell into this mad period before the wrestling landscape changed forever, the amount of star power that Adam Page has given himself since becoming a star in AEW has just been crazy. He could not regret his decision at all. Although he is close with the rest of the elite too, Hangman did come out to say, yes, I was also offered a WWE deal when I was a free agent. And yes, I thought about it for a little bit. And that makes perfect sense. The WWE's been around forever. AEW is a brand new thing. You want to make as much cash as possible, you may be tempted. He did turn it down, obviously, but also praise how good and how understanding the process was. And I like hearing this. All these guys have said that. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy in my dub dub. Additionally, he is now literally having the best time of his life with his buddies. I mean, that's basically the dream. Number one, AJ Styles. This story is just the best because when AJ Styles debuted at the 2016 Royal Rumble, some people 
could not believe their eyes. Despite being one of the best wrestlers in the world, nobody thought Styles would ever turn up in WWE. And if he did, he would never be used right, he'd be buried, he wouldn't be able to do nothing. And here we stand five years after that day, and he is a Grand Slam champion. A major reason for this concern though was how their relationship had gone over the years. When WCW closed down in 2001 where AJ Styles had been working, he was offered a WWE developmental deal but it was only worth $500 a week. He would also have to move to Ohio and while he was very appreciative of the opportunity, it would have meant rerouting his family and taking his wife away from her studies and AJ just didn't think that was right. The reason this is so badass though is because five years ago, WWE was so desperate to get him because of what he'd been doing on a universal stage, they offered him a ton of cash. And as I've already said now, he is one of the most important people in that company. He's a Hall of Famer, he's an all-timer, he's a flipping legend. And it all began when he said, no. None of the other wrestlers that turned down WWE deals, make sure you let us know in the comments below and then like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles and make yourself feel smart. Make sure you follow us on social media and click another video on the screen right now and you will get some instant entertainment. My name is Ivan for What Culture. Thank you for watching me as always, and I'll see you on the next one.